Pink blessing. And you're watching the fucking DSP Space Gaming News. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of the Dense Style News Network. This week we've got an absolutely inordinate amount of retconning. A pole invaded by the detractors. You naughty tractors, you. The possible tie goal. More rationalization of why you can keep utilizing free indentured labor. The beginning of the Hell Divers arc. And the death of Dragon's Dogma. No birthday in this video if that's what you were waiting for. Not enough time, dude. Nothing I could do. Now let's get into it. Uh, you guys asked for it. As we were doing Heavy Rain, people remembered, oh yeah, the Walking Dead playthroughs were really good that Phil did back in the day. It's the same style as, uh, you know, Heavy Rain. Let's see if he'll do it. So you suggested it, and I said, well, you know, I don't want to do it, put it in a poll immediately. We just did Heavy Rain, so I'd like to do a little bit of variety before we jump back into that style of game. So that's why I actually wasn't eligible for this week's Retro React. But after last night, I said, okay, well, you know, Bully didn't do so good. So let's do a poll and let's actually put The Walking Dead into the poll and see if people would be interested in it, all right? So I put the poll up last night during the stream. Now to give you guys some perspective here, all right? You ready? Last week's poll went up and lasted, it was alive for a whole week. By the end of the week, it had about 475 to 500 votes within a week. It took a whole week to get that many votes. Um, I put up the poll last night, during last night's Retro React stream, this morning, 12 hours later, the poll already had 500 votes. He's been trying to give us some perspective a lot this week, and it's starting to get old, especially when we can see with our own eyes what he calls not good. When it comes to the Bully React, what was not good was that he didn't get the same quantity of tips as he did during the Heavy Rain React, and he didn't like talking to his audience about school. He was struggling to make it about himself since he couldn't relate to what they're saying given that he comes from a private school style background. What? So magically, the amount of people who followed the channel just exponentially increased in, in 12 hours, right? Huh? Like, what are you talking about? Right? So then I go and I look. These people are so dumb. They left comments on the poll that were troll comments. I'm not shitting you. They left comments that were like, Oh, do a bunch of pulls in, in the WWE mobile game and pl and then play Bully next week. That's what we want. Like I'm ki I'm not kidding. Those comments were on the fucking poll, and I'm like, gee, I wonder if trolls were instructed to come over here and skew the poll. How stupid can you be? Like, I mean, you want to leave some evidence? You ever seen a, you got caught red-handed? I mean, this is like being caught in the act of doing it while 25 police officers are all staring right at you with videotaped evidence, audio recordings, and a satellite foot feed onto you. Like, how stupid can you be? I imagine those detractors don't mind being quote unquote caught because that's kind of the point. The point is to provoke a reaction out of you. You say you're ignoring the trolls and you're above what they do and then you proceed to do segments like this. You can say the detractors don't live in your head rent free all you like, but your actions speak otherwise. No detractor is being actually caught out here because to them, this is what we're looking for. And for the content creators, this is also what we're looking for because this is just another clip for us. So, I mean, what are you doing here, Bappa? Besides, those comments saying that you should stream yourself doing Hogan Pulse might actually be trying to save your dying channel. On top of that, I had already been told by two different people overnight that apparently they had been talking about it in their stupid detractor circles that they were going to do this skew the poll because they saw that Bully didn't do good. And they were like, haha, if we get him to play Bully again next week, the stream will again do bad. And anything we can do to, to annoy or hurt Phil, we should do. Ha ha ha. So I'm not kidding. 500 votes. 78% of the vote was for Bully. Gee, I wonder if that could be fake. All right. So in, in light of all of this, I have redone the poll. I've deleted the original poll and I made a new one. And I took Bully out of it. And the reason being, I'm going to be honest, I don't think Bully worked very well last night. You know, I wanted to be fair and give it another shot, but it just didn't seem to work for me. Like, I got bored, and if I'm getting bored with what we're reacting to, that's not good. Like, I'm, I'll be honest, I was not bored with Red Dead, I was not bored with Dark Souls, and I was never bored with Heavy Rain. I was bored with Bully within an hour. So, I just don't think that's going to work, okay? <clears throat> 
I don't know a single detractor who believes that what you're playing or watching actually affects your tips. Your dents will donate whatever, whenever, because they're gonna donate no matter what. The only time that changes is when you piss them off by going against whatever game they're interested in at the time. Your bully react was boring and that's why the money didn't come in. And the funny thing about that is, is you're saying that it's not you that's the problem, it's the video you were reacting to, when the video was your video. Riddle me that one, fat man. Fair enough. And also I'll look at comments, I'll listen to what people are saying, because yes, these morons tend to talk about what they're going to do publicly because they're idiots, they can't help it. That's the thing, like, they'll, they'll want to troll, but they're just so, they have no self-control whatsoever. They just want to like brag all over the internet about what they're doing. So they always give away what they're doing somewhere and I always find out about it. Even though I literally never ask, people always bring this information to me without me even asking. They say, so here's what's going on and here's the evidence of it and do with do with it what you will. Okay, thanks. Well, fuck the poll, delete it because it's all fucked up from these idiots and that will start over and go from there, right? You heard him boys, ratting out the allies behind enemy lines, collecting intel on us. Thanks for letting us know, Phil. We'll keep a close eye on him. But of course, as you all know, we detractors are unionized and we all sit together in our secret back room with Iviga and Atlas as they hover above a map of the Snort Fort and plot the next great escapade to hurt Phil's business by rigging totally irrelevant polls. Second verse, same as the first, always with this guy because he never changes. When polls hit the ground running when he was still streaming on Twitch, he would make those benign things and if you watched him while he gave them it's the same as he does now. Option 1, cool. Option two, cool. Option three, oh man, this thing was awesome and robust and the coolest thing ever. Uh, everybody loved it. And then you'll notice that apparently the poll gets rigged by the detractors. And then the, the option that he was far more excited for than the other ones wins. It, I know this shocks you as much as it shocks me, but he might be fucking with the polls. All right, let's take a look at some fucking neckties because that's a normal thing to do with a fucking video game streamer. And someone said, do you have any ties in your house? And I was like, well, I don't dress up in a shirt, shirt and tie. And they're like, well, do you have them? And I looked and guess what? Lo and behold, <clears throat> I do have two ties, all right, from years and years ago. I think I bought these ties for my wedding because I wasn't sure which one I wanted to wear. So I think I bought both. And then I just chose that day which one I was going to wear. And I couldn't even answer for you which one I wore. I have no idea. So I do have two ties. <clears throat> and someone said to me, Phil, do you remember how to tie a tie? I have no idea why he decided to do this. Yes, an audience member asked him about ties. And just to note, he didn't attempt to tie the tie at the time while it was relevant, but instead opted to do it on a later stream for reasons, I'm sure. But I'm sure you're sitting there thinking, Ink, this video was late and you decided to talk about it the clown playing with mature adult-style neckties? What's wrong with you? And I would agree with you. But it has some relevance, I promise. Uh, will you have a tie goal on your stream? Uh, probably not, unless people really, really wanted it, right? Um, I don't know why people would care so much about a tie goal on the stream. If we we're gonna do a tie goal, then it would, it would be, it would replace the vest, basically, right? We do, we do gunner glasses, hat, tie. I guess if we hit two hundred bucks, then we would add the vest or something like that. Do you really think that when I'm playing alone in the dark, that we're gonna be hitting two hundred dollars in tips? I don't. We didn't do that ever in like months and months. I don't think we're hitting that, you know. But I think, uh, you know, it was just something silly to show you that I have it. Yes, I could still tie it. A good tie, too. Nautica. It's a Nautica tie. And, uh, you know, from a bygone era of my life where I used to wear this kind of stuff all the time for work, right? There you have it. He pulled this out thinking it was going to be the Vest Gold 2.0, making sure to establish that he doesn't get big tips anymore like he did back then. The $200 tie goal is supposedly in effect here even though the only stream he hit that on was during his birthday marathon, and he didn't bother putting on any of the goal rewards there, I'm sure because they were gifts and not donations, and since it was his birthday that makes them non-taxable I'm sure. Wouldn't be the first time he allegedly committed fraud. Now let's find out what's bugging him and the decline of his business with no toxicity added. What are we gonna do? 
And here you go. I love it. Zero accountability, zero chat, zero fucking interaction. You're banned. What a fucking idiot. Literally all evidence points to it's the games right now. Because I've tried everything. I've listened to feedback. I've played the games you want. And if it doesn't work, how could it be me? I the my streams would be just talking do better. So what the fuck are you talking about? Kiss my ass. Fucking idiot. Trust me. If when I was doing content of me just talking, it tanked, then I'd be like, okay, makes sense. I'm the I'm the problem. Obviously, that's not the fucking case, right? People are actually saying things like, it's more boring to watch me play a game than just sit here and talk with you. That's pretty interesting and telling, don't you think? I'm more entertaining than, a, than the game I'm playing. Uh, sorry I lied to you. I guess there was some toxicity hidden in there, and certainly not the only reason I put this clip in the video. What's telling in this clip is that he clearly doesn't realize that the game isn't the only thing that's supposed to carry the stream, and no matter how boring or fun a game is, it all boils down to the personality behind the wheel. But nope, today we get confirmation that the games he has been playing are detractors and trying to kill his business, with a grandiose not his fault in the mix. While we're here knocking the little things out of the way, why don't we talk about the little guys at Burnell Productions, his editors. Oh, let's see here. I received a $10 tip. Thank you so much to Gregor. He says, wow, you have editors now? I remember a few years ago, there was no way for you to have paid employees. You've turned your life around financially. Well done. Uh, Gregor, I've already stated many times that I don't pay any employees. I can't afford to pay employees. These are people who stepped up and said they wanted to help out with the channel particularly uh, wanted to help out with the idea of a throwback channel where I preserve my content for posterity purposes. Ideally, these people are learning skills that they're going to use in the future. Can't afford to pay employees, but is more than happy to shell out more money than he spends on his mortgage in a year on WW Champions and those also precious sweaty man JPEGs. For those of you unaware, as I know one of my viewers who is very dear to me, DSP has a team of editors working on upscaling and editing videos from a bygone era where he lost most of his uploads, and now they have to grind through this garbage content and try and make it presentable, which has so far resulted in bad gameplay videos now suffering from over and under exposure, rendering the text completely unreadable, stolen footage from other YouTubers, being forced to fill in the gaps for the aforementioned bad gameplay, and generally subpar editing work. Uh, not to say mine's much better, but you get what you pay for. And here we're gonna get excuses from a man who makes over 100k a year and why he can't shell out a couple hundred dolans to at least do the bare minimum he could for the people that are putting their time into making him money. Right? Like, they're editing the, my old content into 30 minutes, they're upscaling, they're audio scrubbing, they're adding frame rate, you know, they're doing thumbnails. So they're doing all this work, and this work is going to add to their repertoire that they can use in the future. That's why they're doing it. They offered their services to me as a way to make the throwback channel viable and also, you know, get some some work experience under their, their what do they say, under their skin, under their, I don't even know how you say it, but that's why. As an editor, you would take segments of videos you've worked on and then present them in a portfolio as proof of your quality as an editor, if you were looking for a job as one, or so I assume. And I cannot for a second imagine presenting what is essentially an AI upscale pile of slop polished up with minor editing tweaks and just a few dashes of stolen content sprinkled in there as part of said portfolio. This guy's absolutely insane saying that his editors are paid in experience as if that justifies it. It's just basically being an intern for the world's gaudiest boss. I made no money on content creation before and during this channel, and when people put in work for me, I make sure to pay them in any way I can, just because that's the way it should be. If you respect someone, their time, and the effort they're willing to put in for you regardless or not of them asking for pay, you pay the person, because that's a dignified and right thing to do. His excuse of not having money to pay them is gross, especially if you've seen his bank leaks. This is pure disrespect. No, I can't afford. Like, for example, someone who was it, OP Boone, he had a great suggestion. He says, why don't you do once a week a night stream where a bunch of people submit content and basically you, you scrub the content, go through the content and watch the submissions live and react to it. I was like, that would be great, except I need a team of people to, to, to take the content, scrub the content, put it into threads. That's how other YouTubers do it. They pay employees 
to sit there and edit for them, to edit their, their content submissions, to do that work for them. I don't have time to do that myself. I'm already here six days a week full time, streaming and working as it is. I, I can't do all that myself or juggle it. And they said, well, why don't your editors do it? My editors already have their hands full of what they're doing. Do you not notice the great thumbnails on all the videos? Do you not notice all the work going in the DSP throwback? Like they're, they're chock full loaded with work as it is. They can't do any more, right? And I can't pay someone to do it. So that's what I mean. I'm very limited in what I can do. I'm happy that people are enjoying the improvements and things that we're doing, but then continuing to request more and more. It's like, you got to draw a line at some point, you know? But anyway, thank you for the tip. Um, other YouTubers pay people to help with their editing, guys. And he's not like the other girls, so he can't do that. They're overwhelmed doing all this free labor. Come in. I certainly hope they get something out of this, which I highly doubt they will. And I also hope they stop stealing people's content, because in general that's not cool. Now, let's get to my second favorite segment of this video, the death of Dragon's Dogma. Where am I going? I don't know where I am or where I'm going. I can't tell where anything is at night. How is this the game's fault? Because the game is fucking stupid. It doesn't tell you how to do it. It just expects that you're going to magically know when to go, how to go, how to do it. Look, you ready? Here's what the quest says. You're to send a masquerade. In order to get an entry, dress in formal raiment. I have formal raiment, I have the mask. I walk to the waypoint and it lets me in and everyone leaves. That's the game's fault. So fuck you for saying dumb shit in the chat. Oh, that's your fault. It's the game's fucking fault, you fucking bozo. You complete mental midget. It's the game's fucking fault I didn't make the game. I did what I was told and it doesn't work. You're an idiot. God, people are fucking stupid. Always blame the gamer. No, fuck you. The game is stupid right now. It's being dunce level fucking intellect. There's no way you to know when to do this. <laughs> you fucking moron. I'm going into this as someone who's completed this game and loves it. He is furious and berating this viewer because the game doesn't hold his hand. And that's the best part. Dragon's Dog was built almost exactly the same way as the first game was, and it's basically go here and do this thing. There are very few quest updates, there are very little if any hints. It just expects you to go and figure it out, which holy shit. I didn't realize how much I missed that until this game came out. When you become so complicit with modern game design telling you step by step how to tie your shoes, you get DSP levels of brain rot. How do you not know what time to go to a masquerade? He's the only one I've ever seen have this issue. I mean, they're usually known to happen at night, so I guess sleep until night and then go to the thing and don't show up at the crack of dawn when everyone's staggering home? It's pretty simple. And it makes me wonder how many functions he's missed due to dyschronometria. Craig, please, did you just show up? Did you not see what happened? I walked up there. I talked to the guard. The guard said, oh, you can enter the masquerade. I walked in, and as I entered, everyone left. So I couldn't do the quest. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Cameraman, spinning. You're welcome to come and play anytime. No thanks. If you escape with your life. No thanks, I like to stay healthy down there, not no, catch 4,000 diseases. <laughs> do not come Please let me out. Please let me out. I don't need to be here. I, I have no use for your services, that's for sure. There's already, what is it, the dragon... The dragon plague or whatever in the game? I don't need to get freaking 400 STDs in this place just by being in here. How do I leave? <laughs> you know, they like boxed you in. How do you get out? How the fuck do you leave? There's no stairwell down. How do I get out of here? She's blocking the door. Get the fuck out of the way. Wait, there's no... Where's the exit? This isn't the exit, this is the back entrance. How the hell do you get a- Oh, there's a chest, hold on. <laughs> there's a chest right here. A bunch of flo- Wow, a bunch of flowers, really useful. How do you leave? You're just- Oh my god. Where the fuck is the way out? Here, I know how to leave, this way. Let me show you. Look at oh shit! Whoa! Now we're Elden ringing it. Now we're climbing everything, look at this. Uh, here. I'm taking the escape route. Get me out of here. <laughs> That's great. What a stupid thing. My apology. This absolute buffoon doesn't deserve a game as good as DD2. First of all, that's a main character in this plotline. 
and she does nothing but help you. But, uh, sex workers, venereal diseases, women, ack, ack. Also, Elden Ringing it? Where in the fucking Elden Ring are you clambering like that? What a weird comparison. It's DSP, so I assume the connection was Medieval Fantasy, so it's the same game. But so far we've seen him get lost on a basic quest, and then go to a brothel, and on a stream with low tips. What could this possibly mean for the future of Dragon's Dogma? Alright, well guys, for those who, of you who were here, uh, I want to say thank you to, for chilling and hanging out with me for Dragon's Dogma 2. For the few that did contribute, thank you. Uh, we'll try it again on Wednesday night, and we'll see what happens. All right? I'm going to be honest. I would like more people to show up, engage, and support with my streams. As I'm certain you already know, Dragon's Dogma never made a return and was quickly ousted after this stream. And having now beaten the game, I wouldn't mind seeing him try and beat it. Because watching him get shit canned and fall off cliffs and constantly get stuck on basic quests over and over again would generate some good salt. But for now, we're here to say goodbye and farewell to DD2 and hello to Hell Divers. Do you believe in alone in the dark? I can feel something inside me saying I really have to strongly fight Oh, What are you talking about? What the fuck is wrong with you? No, really. What the fuck is wrong with you? You got problems up here. Preface. Dark Side Clown here finally decided to cave to his audience who had been telling him that Hell Divers 2 was a great game and a great streaming game for a number of reasons, which I guess kind of boiled down that the other games weren't getting tips other than BG3, and it's not an RPG. So if it did well, which it did, it would prove his theory that people are sick of RPGs and that the detractor game devs really were screwing him like that bear guy did. Now, this is an online game where griefing is very viable and team kill lenient, so we know where that's gonna go. And our boy had to let his audience know what was up and who was to blame if it didn't go well. Pop Tub says, wait to listen to feedback. Well, there's a difference between feedback and getting screamed at for two months, so I figured I would give it a shot because no one was tuning into my RPG streams regardless, so. <laughs> I might as well do something someone's going to watch, right? All right, everybody. I'm playing Hell Divers 2 because people kept bugging me about it. Pig to English translation here. You guys were giving me advice that this is a breakout success of a game, and regardless of the fact that I go out of my way to avoid anything but AAA titles, you think that I might enjoy this game. And due to you ignoring my excuses like not having established allies and insisting on it, I have finally caved to the peer pressure. But don't worry, if I don't like it, I'll make sure you all sit through another boardroom meeting where I berate you and force you to make my schedule for the fifth time this week. Alright, while this is happening, I'm gonna grab the hat. Four E Prime terminated under terminated control. All right. All right. Quite some time because I wore the M Bison hat, but I figured this would be the appropriate game for it. It's time to put the dick back and dictate it. You know what I'm saying? Holy shit! That was a curveball I didn't expect. Actolf Pigler hit the scene out of nowhere. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, the Nazi uh, Bison hat came out of retirement for this game. I honestly couldn't believe it after all the memes people made last time. He just can't help himself, I swear. Now, I know those of you who enjoy a little trolling will be hyped for what comes next when some jagass shows our little comrade what's up. But before that, we've got a pity party to go to, hosted by the guy, as his team either recognizes that he's dead weight, or recognizes who he is, and outright refuses to resurrect him. Oh, this is very, very bad. There's so many. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. God damn. That was a lot of them. I don't even know what I'm doing here. I, I just wait, I guess. I did press X. Look, it doesn't do anything. X does nothing. I don't know what's going on. I can't, I can't seem to spawn. I don't understand it. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just sitting here like an idiot. You think it's bugged I was supposed to spawn? Well, that's great. I just started playing. This is wasting my time, basically. I received a $3 tip. 
Oh, an anonymous tipper. Thank you for an anonymous $3 tip, whoever this is. I'm on it. Well, I guess I can't play, guys. I guess the game doesn't want me to play anymore. I got the, terminal. the game said, oh, you were enjoying your first session? Let's just ruin it now for everybody. So. I'm on it. Back out? You want me to back out and get no reward for this? Calling in reinforcements. Stay to win the reward or leave. You want me to back out and get no reward for this? Get rewarded for what, Philip? Being dead? Not engaging with the game? Yeah, getting shafted like that would suck, I completely agree. But what you can do is roll with the punches. I suppose you could sit there, look sadly at your controller as your pixelated friends have fun without you and weep over the fact that a large portion of the gaming community either wants nothing to do with you, actively despises you, or just finds you fun to mess with. And beyond that, YES! they want you to leave because it's not fun to watch a streamer sit there in dead silence being a bitch. Hey D's of the Super Chat saying they have to reinforce you. Well, I guess they don't like me then. They hate me. They think I'm an asshole. And who wouldn't, Mr. King of Hate? They probably hardly know who you are. Not in the way a lot of us do. And even on the surface, you're a very hard person to like. I've made it an exercise while I'm clipping your stuff to find things that you say that are agreeable and relatable. And even when I find something, you find a way to twist it into a victim segment, a begment, or some kind of verbal abuse. In this case, I'm actually going to exit doubt that they hate you and just say they probably saw that you were low level and not very useful, and that you'd be more dead weight and handicapped to the run, which they could finish quicker without you. Simple game dynamics of the online community when you join as a rando in a game where the goal is to get the job done and get the currency to get the next unlock. It ain't that deep. Return to ship alone. Bot scrapper. Play one bot mission. I mean, did I really play it? If the game glitched out and I got no rewards for it, did I actually do it? I got cheated. I was, I got completely cheated. Wow. My time was wasted. I did nothing wrong. I did everything correct. Ah, ah, he said it, he said it. I did nothing wrong. I did everything correct. Ah, ah, there it is, there it is. I don't understand why I was mistreated in such a way. What did I do wrong? Well, I, why did I deserve that? He has to know. There's no way he doesn't know. I did nothing wrong. I did everything correct. Has to be one of the oldest DSP memes in the book and has been used on him for ages. And this is the first time since I've been a detractor that I've seen him say it unironically, from what I'm assuming anyway. This whole pity party was just one big amalgamation of the DSP memes that have been built up over the years and man, if he thought that was mistreatment, wait until Jagass catches up with him. Also, just add, Jagass was in Raw Phil's chat before he got in game, so one of us, one of us. Some Jagass, level 89, Admiral, Admirable Amor, Admiral. And he's got a spiffy outfit, look at that. Let's play. Affirmative. Why is he shooting me? Oh, uh, he's shooting me. He just killed me. Why did he do that? What was the point of that? Why did he kill me? Why did he kill me again? Point me to the enemy. How about my cup of liver tea? Why is he doing this? Like, what's the point? What's the point of doing this? It's just making the mission harder, is it not? Right? Like, why would you do that? It doesn't make sense. Did he quit? Did he just quit the game? I think he quit the game, right? Is he still in the game? If he's still in the game and he's gonna keep doing it, I might as well just quit, right? Yeah, look.
This is the game you guys wanted me to play. This is what I'm facing tonight. Okay. Well, that was fun. But what was the point of that? Right? I don't get it. I'm at a total loss. <laughs> you tell me what that accomplished. Now, I have heard some people saying that they don't agree with team killing and griefing even when it comes to the guy. And I actually can't say one way or the other. It's been a part of games since it became a functional possibility. With all the shit he talks and all the garbage he has to say about other gamers, I'm just gonna throw my hands up and say whatever happens, happens. I don't have a dog in that particular fight. But I did enjoy the show. It's been a long time since we've seen the guy back out in the open in any game since he usually isolates himself in his little solo play bubble. And this is actually a vastly different response than we used to get when he was open like this. No bluster, no indignation, just defeat. And I'm not sure what to make of it personally. I never trust anything when it comes to the guy, but that was almost believable. And could have been sad if he didn't immediately go blaming his audience for the experience he was having, when it's actually his fault for cultivating all the hate he's reaped over the years, making this the thing that's prone to happening. Not to mention not turning on streamer mode from what I've been told. Haley, you are absolutely in fucking correct, and if you ever say something like that again, I will ban you from the chat. They said, Baldur's Gate 3 carried this channel for these months. Like a Dragon is what killed it. Like a Dragon was played like two to three times a week on a late stream when already we have low attendance. Baldur's Gate 3 was what killed the viewership on this channel. No one was watching the videos on demand whatsoever, and it was a small group of very big fans of it that were supporting the streams, but it killed the viewership on this channel overall. This channel has been down for three months. Don't ever fucking lie again because you're fanboying out about Baldur's Gate 3. The facts are the fucking facts. All right? Cut the shit. Toxicity jump scare. Hope you enjoyed that. As always, followed up with the victory sip. You feel bad about him getting griefed in Helldivers now? Anyway, we're back to this and it's just as insufferable as it's always been. I'm not really going to beat this dead cat because we've been over it a million times about how this makes no sense. It got the tips and that's the liquidity of his business. He's just trying to find ways to fault it for the mess that his channel has become. But as a sign of good faith, let's hear him out. People are just so one one track minded because they think, oh, well, people came in and tipped during your streams. Yes, but overall, this channel has suffered. It lost about one third of its ongoing viewership. I want to repeat that. One third of the people who used to come to this channel to watch me play games left during the months of January, February, and March when I was playing Baldur's Gate 3 because they didn't care about the game. And it was the one thing that I was majorly playing more than anything else. They just dipped. And I'm waiting for them and hoping they're going to come back as I'm doing variety again. You know who left during this time? The detractors for the most part. It was so boring and god awful watching this guy's hoof be held through the entirety of one of the best RPGs of our time that most of us couldn't handle it. The only thing most of us were watching were the clips from when he raged and for every 10 minute clip of Salt there was 10 hours of dead air gameplay where all he did was go through menus, screw up dialogue and ask his audience what he should be doing. What he's doing here is catering to us because we left and he wants us back. How romantic. Helson must be jealous. You understand? Uh, I, I can't. I can't have a channel be a 140 hour endeavor and lose a third of my audience because people are bored. All right, so we can now cut the shit and stop, you know, sugarcoating it. That's what happened. I wasn't playing like a dragon for 12 hours a week. I was playing it for like four hours a week. So you're full of it. And I'm tired of this skate. This whole straw manning and scapegoating shit needs to stop of people trying to blame a game that literally had nothing to do with it. It 100% was Baldur's Gate 3. Now, that doesn't mean the game is bad. That means it doesn't fit my format, as I said when I skipped it in September of last year. That's also why, as I approach a game like Stalker 2, I'm telling you, I am absolutely not committing to doing a full playthrough. I will try it out. It's on Game Pass. But if we get tired of it, if I see that there's a negative pattern on this channel, I'm going to stop playing it. And we're going to move on and do other things. Okay? <clears throat> Fair enough. And if you lie about it and try to scapegoat it, and straw man it and make up bullshit, you won't be in my chat anymore because I hate people who want to fucking try to do that shit because they don't want to fess up to fucking reality. All right? Baldur's Gate 3 is a great game. It doesn't work for everyone. It, it certainly did not work for my audience. Okay? <clears throat> okay. Goodbye to this person. I've had enough. I'm just not going to say nothing anymore. I'm just going to ban these people. All right.
Okay. Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye. Get rid of the morons. That way I can focus on the rest of my show. Okay. <clears throat> Good. So now, if you have eyes and refuse to convince yourself that they have deceived you into believing that BG3 wasn't the most well-funded game on the channel, you are now in ban world. Because you're going against the narrative, and you know we can't have that. I'm sure we aren't done hearing about the newest S-tier detractor, BG3, because he loves holding grudges, and he hates that game no matter what he says, so it's on his shit list. Now let's get to the meteor segment of the video, changing the narrative around the Begathons. BB filled in another super chat and says you should do a huge mega goal tomorrow, tie incoming. You know, a few years ago, I would say, you know, 2021, 2020, 2019, 2018, when I first was becoming a full-time live streamer, and when things financially were a lot worse than they are now, uh, I used to do that. I used to do a marathon, and the marathon essentially would be a fundraiser. And we'd have a big goal. Can we can we reach $1,000 total raised today? And if we do, woohoo, and we'll do a celebratory thing and this and that. And, you know, number one, I got a lot of flack for doing it. A lot of people were like, you know, you're supposed to be a content creator. You're not a fundraiser. This is not like, you know, oh my God, someone in your family just got diagnosed with a bat with something horrible and you're raising funds to pay for their medical treatment, which would be an appropriate reason to be doing fundraisers like that. This is just like you're trying to fundraise to do basic paying your bills and shit. Uh First of all, yes, we the detractors were telling you that. Your dents and mods were yes manning all those begathons and keeping any dissenting voices banned from speaking in your chat. Second of all, you weren't just asking for money, you were actively feigning distress. I could go to jail if I don't pay my taxes. I could lose my house. I could go out of business. All these grandiose claims that you were in the most dire of straits to swindle actual thousands of dollars out of your audience. And that's not even getting into the $2,000 Jasper scam. You were breaking TOS, begging like a crackhead going through withdrawals, and generally being a scumbag while taking over in $100,000 a year and spending thousands on a mobile game all the while. You aren't aren't really a content creator, you're more like a charity case. People got pretty upset about that. I even remember when Jasper Kitty was first introduced to the streams in 2019. All I said to everyone was, if we hit a certain financial goal on a stream, I'm going to introduce something that'll be a cool positive thing moving forward on streams. And we hit it and then I revealed Jasper and people were like, so you made people pay $1,000 to see a cat? And I was like, well, no, that wasn't the point. The point was you supported the channel. I needed the help. You know, back then, again, I was going through awful financial stuff. I was heading into a bankruptcy. And I was like, that was the point is that you support me. And then I'll do something nice, like show my cat on stream. And he'll be part of the streams moving forward every once in a while. But instead, people were like, oh, so we had to pay $1,000 to see a cat. And I was like, that's not even what it was. It's not like I advertised it like that. I never did. But people acted like I did. I'm not going to get super deep into this one because we all know what happened with the Jasper scam. And if you don't, uh, just go look it up. There's tons of videos. But he absolutely did present it that way. He did feign distress. And it wasn't $1,000 he received. It was 2000 So he's lying through his goddamn teeth. Whatever. Anyway, so over the years, we have had marathon events where this was the thing. I would have like a giant goal to raise during the event. Today, it's this simple. I don't even have a qualifying event for this stuff anymore. Remember, it used to be, oh, hit a certain amount of members in a month or a certain amount of subs over on Twitch in a month, and then we'll do a marathon. I, I just do it. We, we basically uh, we totally threw all that out last year, remember? Basically, what happened was so much negativity and people always saying you're all about the money and stuff, and I said, well, forget it then. Let's change it all. If I'm going to do a marathon, we'll just do a marathon just for fun, just to break things up, to have something fresh and different. And then we'll plan for the marathon over a period of time. We'll work out together what we want to do for them. And, you know, if people want to come by and support the marathon, they can. And if they don't want to, they don't have to. Some marathons do way better than others. You know, traditionally, like a Christmas marathon or a birthday marathon usually does good. I just did a Super Bowl marathon in February. It was as if I had just done a normal streaming day. And it's fine. It's perfectly fine. If people feel that they, you know, they like the content, they like me, they want to support the stuff, they can. And if they don't want to, they don't have to. I'm not going to sit here acting like the only reason that I'm on stream is, is to make money. I'm not. I mean, I'm here to have fun with you guys. Originally, when I started this video, I was cutting all the begging out to be a separate beg extravaganza part, since there was a massive amount of begging this week. I ran out of time, so I'm not going to be able to do it. So I'll just say, 
I had about 20 minutes of begging, and those were just the bags between splitting the part, not the mid part bags and no sneak bags. But of course, he's not in it for the money. Most notably, that's what I want to do. That's why when people say, I don't understand, you kept playing certain games and they just didn't make you any money. I don't get it, because I'm not here to make money. I'm here to show my passion for games. And then my mentality is, if I'm having a good time, and that's coming through in the stream, if you're having a good time, and you're enjoying that content, it goes hand in hand, and now we have a reciprocation of enjoyment, and you might be like, well, I want that to continue. I like this guy, and then you'll support the stream. That's how it works. It's not me sitting here with a bar that I'm trying to fill during a marathon. Oh, I need to raise this amount and all of that. You know, I very rarely did anything like that, and I don't want to do that anymore. Okay? At least he finishes up this segment saying he doesn't want to do it anymore, and kind of throws shade at content creators that do marathons still. Even though when he quit doing begathons, he openly said it's because he recognized he was draining his audience dry with his monthly begathons and leaving them nothing to tip through the rest of the month which during that time he would complain about. It was really gross, and it was a, just a generally gross area of DSP. But we're not quite done talking about topics related to this subject yet, as he gets a tip referring to a time where he sat his audience down and spent an entire stream shopping for a new TV when his died, while sneaking in as many bags as he could that the audience should buy it for him, which they did for the most part. I love this, Robert. I, here's what I love about my haters, is that they completely make shit up, because it's their own revisionist history. This guy, Roberto, he did a super chat. He's already banned. He says, oh, last year you did a whole stream where you were shopping for a TV live on stream so people would buy it for you. Uh, no. I was on stream shopping for a TV because I needed a new one right away because mine died. And I wanted advice on what TV to get. And a lot of people gave me advice. And I bought it with my own money, but it just so happened a few people decided to donate during the stream to help pay for it. So you're wrong. You're an asshole. You're an idiot. You lie to make shit up and skew the truth for your own little revisionist history for your circle jerking losers. Go fuck yourself. Enjoy your ban. But thanks for the super chat. <clears throat> okay, cool. Thank you guys for coming along with me on this little weekly journey of DSP. I know I've missed some things like KK Kirk trying to tip DSP for an unban again, and particularly the birthday. I tried getting it and had all sorts of issues. So if I have time this week, that'll become its own little video. You guys are the best and I appreciate you very much. As always, have a great week and don't let the bastards grind you down.